what God did in the conception and the virgin birth and the life and death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest act, I think, that God has shown to mankind. Again, Brother Jake has a, a small introduction. Good evening to everyone. I'm surprised so many came out. It's a, it's a great occasion. Yeah. Uh, I was asked to share a little introduction this evening to the uh, program or to the play that uh, we're going to be having here. Uh, one of the things I think that uh, I need to share and clear with you all here this evening is that uh, we have been looking at this whole subject of the nativity and the birth of Christ and trying to bring it from a, from a very biblical standpoint. Uh, through the years of time and through the... Uh, different uh, opinions of different people in reading the scriptures and probably a lar largely due to some uh, Catholic uh, tradition. We've all come up with some traditional ideas that if they're really examined from the scripture, they don't hold up. And this evening, we're going to try to maybe, shall we say, uh, sideline a few of those myths. Um, I have a few questions for us tonight. Can someone tell me how many wise men there were that came to see Jesus? Anyone? Three? Very good answer. Why, why do we say there's three? Anybody? Why is there three? Three gifts. Three gifts, that's right. Now, does that mean to say that there's three of them? Absolutely not. Uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh doesn't mean to say that there was only three gifts. I mean... Uh, Nowadays, you know, we have a lot of different gifts. doesn't really say how many people gave the gifts. I'm just guessing. We're looking at travel probably in a dangerous time from a far country. These were noblemen. These were men of, well, they probably were a half a dozen, maybe a dozen of them. Maybe a few dozen armed servants. Very likely. But anyway, that's, uh, that's one. Here's, here's another one. I'll read just a few verses here in, in Luke chapter 2. It says here in Luke chapter 2 and verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. We see the first gift wrapping right here. She wrapped, she wrapped baby Jesus in swaddling clothes. Uh, but here it says, and so while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Now, you know, in all your plays, you're likely going to see a woman that's uh, already in labor and traveling and very uncomfortable and, you know, at the verge of giving birth. But here it says that the days were accomplished while they were there. So it seems like they have been living there. Uh, but one of the main things I want to look at was the last verse, word here in verse 7. It says, no room for them in the inn. If we look at that word in, in the, in the Greek, it is kataluma. Kataluma is the word in Greek. And that word is, is two other times used in the New Testament, and it speaks of a guest room. It doesn't speak of a public inn. The, the word Kataluma is not used in the Bible of a public inn. There is another word used as a public inn when, uh, when the Good Samaritan took the wounded man and took him to an inn. That was a public inn, and I think that is Pando Chion. Pando Chion is in Greek the, uh, the word for a public inn. But a guest room, which uh, the other two times it's used in the New Testament, is used when the disciples went and looked for an upper room to have the Last Supper. That was a guest room. It was not a public inn. And uh, so, in that time frame, Joseph and Mary, being very poor people, they were not very wealthy, 
they did not go to a public inn, but rather more than likely went to stay with some relatives. They were from the lineage of that town. They likely had relatives in that town, and uh, so they went to stay in that town, probably with some relatives. So in our play tonight, that's going to come out really strong, and maybe if uh, some of you are curious why we don't have the innkeeper standing there and say we don't have any room for you, uh, rather, the, the term here is used, there was no room for them in the guest chamber. Now, if you've traveled in the Middle East, and if you've traveled in Eastern Europe, you will recognize that traditionally, many of the homes are built with a basement that is actually a major, or actu actually a small stable. And I've seen that in Europe, and, and traditionally in the Middle East, that's how they do it presently, and that's actually how they have discovered from, ar from archaeology that it was done probably back at that time. They had a stable in the basement where they had a few cattle, or maybe a milk cow or something that they fed in the basement that would come in and it provided them, uh, especially the cold country, they could, they could uh, take care of their animals without going out in the cold. It also provided some heat for the home. So uh, uh, just as an introduction, we are not looking at uh, this, this stable idea. It's more of a manger in the lower part of the house rather than in the upper room. So uh, that, that's, that's basically some of, the, some of the changes you'll see in the play. So don't be surprised if uh, we don't have the innkeeper uh, turning Mary and Joseph away. Okay, let's all stand for a word of prayer. <coughs> Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for the occasion of celebrating Jesus Christ. Lord, we don't know that Jesus was born any time around this time of the year. But we thank you for that gift whatever time of the year it came. And we rejoice that we have been counted worthy for that gift to be accounted to us. And uh, this evening, Lord, we want to rejoice in that gift. And we want to celebrate that gift. I just pray that you'd bless each one of the students that participate in the play. And I pray that you'd bless each listener, each one of the uh, audience with a blessing and a reality of that gift. We just put our trust in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Approximately 700 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah spoke before King Ahaz. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Shall call me blessed. 
For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has so strengthened his arm, and he has scattered the proud imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has hoped in his silver in Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, and to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take her to be Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall be shall a son and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you, God. Good way. 
accomplished for the circumcising of the child. His name was called Yeshua. I'm an old man in the temple, waiting in the court, waiting for the answer to a promise. All at once I see them in the morning sunshine. The couple comes and carries in a baby. Mary and the baby come, and in her hand five shekels. Simeon takes the boy and starts to sing. Now that I've held him in my arms, my life can come to an end. Let your servant now depart in peace. I've seen your salvation. He is the light of the Gentiles and the glory of his people Israel. Now's the time to take him in your arms. Your life will never come to an end. He's the only way that you'll find peace. He'll give you salvation. He's the light of the Gentiles and the glory of his people, Israel. Whoa. 